Today, we're talking about our top eight must draft rookies. Let's get it. Welcome to Phase Fantasy Live with your host, Lonnie Z. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the show. I am so excited. Fantasy football 2022 is right around the corner. The drafts are already happening. I had my first draft this weekend, and it was awesome just to be out there, just to put all the research into effect finally. And it was a great time. I'll recap that a little later. But today is our inaugural podcast for the 2022 fantasy football season. We're going to be talking fantasy football all season long. We're going to walk you through the season. We're going to help you with waiver wire picks. We're going to help you identifying sleepers and rookies and trade targets. It's just going to be a great year. We'll even do some daily fantasy. That's what we actually specialize in. So we'll have a special podcast for the daily fantasy stuff with FanDuel and DraftKings. But let's get right into it. Today, we're going to be talking about rookies that need to be rostered in every league on every format. It doesn't matter if it's PPR, if it's standard, if it's half PPR. These guys need to be rostered. Now, I have eight of them on this list. And I'm not saying to draft all eight, but if you can get three of them on your team, you're really going to strengthen your team this year because all these guys have the potential and have the, they have been put in the situation where they're going to get a lot of playing time right from the beginning. So they can potentially help anybody's fantasy team right away. Let's check it out. First, we're going to talk about probably the most hyped rookie of them all. He was the number one ranked rookie, Brees Hall. Now, Brees Hall, reports coming out of the Jets camp all indicate that Hall is going to be the lead back in New York. Now, he should get most of the goal line touches. You know, Robert Sala will use Michael Carter and Hall both, but Brees Hall is the guy that you want to target. He has great upside value. His current ADP in PPR format is 51. So like in a 10-team league, that puts him about sixth round or, you know, in a 12-team league, that puts him around the fourth round. In my draft that just happened on Saturday, I was able to pick him up in the fifth round. And my draft kind of went a little sideways on me from the beginning. I ended up, because I had the ninth pick, having to do a sort of a, you know, zero RB type of a way to approach my draft. Um, I'm really not a fan of that, but it turned out all right. So Brees Hall, I got him in the fifth round. Now, look, I know that uh, Michael Carter's there and the Jets do like Carter, but obviously they don't like him that much because they drafted Brees Hall. Brees Hall, If you go check out my video and my player breakdown on this guy, I really think he's a stud. He's the real deal. He is a a workhorse. He's a three down back. And so you have to roster this guy. You got to get him on your roster. I wouldn't take him any sooner than the fifth round. I think that he'll be there sixth and seventh and even eighth round. I think in most drafts, but you got to start taking a hard look at him probably around the fifth round, but you don't want really want to miss out. If you're going to target a New York Jets running back, target Brees Hall. Now, Kenneth Walker the third is on this list too, but since we prepared for this podcast and did the research, Kenneth Walker recently had surgery. And so uh, he's recovering and they're saying that he should be a full go come um opening day that's what the early reports were but if i if i go and check out the latest reports because we just did a an article on him today at phasefantasy.com go check it out an update on kenneth walker the third's recovery from hernia surgery on sunday and didn't sound as optimistic as he did last week he's still pretty tender carol said i was with him today 
he's got some things to heal to go in and do um and they needed to go in and do what they needed to do so it's just a matter of time we just don't have a designated sequence yet we'll have to see how he responds so they're waiting for him to you know just kind of heal and some time to see how the surgery took and see when he's going to be back in full force the thing with kenneth walker the third is he's a really good dynamic running back and he should get a lot of playing time that all depends though I, and, and he, don't get me wrong he's going to get playing time no matter what happens with rashad penny they have already carved out a role for Kenneth Walker the third Rashard Penny is the number one guy there and if he stays healthy he really significantly diminishes Kenneth Walker's fantasy value because Rashard Penny would then be the one to target in the fantasy uh, for fantasy owners in Seattle's backfield but I think you have to really look at at Kenneth Walker I think he went in like the 10th round in the draft that I just did. Someone picked him up around the 10th round. He'll probably be there late, especially because he's going through the surgery and no one's really sure when he's going to be available. But he's one to really keep your eye on. And before the end of the season, he's going to be rostered uh, all throughout the league for sure. James Cook. Now, if you've kept up with my YouTube and you've watched any of the videos that I've made on these rookie highlights, you'll know how I feel about James Cook. I think James Cook is dynamic. I think he's going to be the perfect fit for the Buffalo Bills. And for that offense, he catches the ball like a wide receiver out of the backfield. He's got shake and bake. He's pretty durable. He's quick and fast. He's a little smaller than his brother Dalvin, but you know, he's still got to get his NFL body on. He's just coming out of college, so he's going to grow. He's going to get stronger and bigger. You got to get him on your roster. I was able to pick him up in the ninth round. Uh, let me check that out. Now, the 11th round, I picked James Cook up in the 11th round in my draft. So he'll be out there later. I'm telling you, by the end of the season, James Cook is going to be the number one back in Buffalo. Devin Singletary, I like Devin Singletary, but he is what he is, right? I mean, he's had plenty of opportunity to show the Bills what he's capable of doing, and he's pretty much shown them. He's, he's who he is. And so they wanted something more dynamic. They wanted um, someone that can catch the ball a true three down back. I think they got it with James Cook. And I think it's just a matter of time. You've got to get him. You can probably get him between the eighth and the 10th round. So go get James Cook in your drafts, target him. He is really one that you want to stash away because when his time comes, he's going to pay off big time for you. Isaiah Spiller is another running back rookie running back that we are saying you got he's got to be rostered and the real reason the isaiah spiller has to be rostered spiller has to be rostered is not because he's just the greatest running back in the league coming into the league as a rookie he's very good he's very serviceable he's a big guy i mean you know he's 6 1 215 this is a big guy and that's what the chargers wanted the los angeles chargers wanted a big back to compliment uh, austin eckler but the reason we're saying that he needs to be rostered is because he's going to be a, a number one handcuff, just like Alexander Madison for the Vikings and Alexander Madison is in fantasy. If you're going to pick up a handcuff, it's Alexander Madison because of Dalvin Cook. Well, the same here. Austin Eckler, he did okay last year. He didn't really deal with too many injuries, but we know in the past he has had injuries. So Isaiah Spiller, He's going to move right on up in that handcuff conversation as one of the top handcuffs. You got to go get Isaiah Spiller and just sit him on your bench. You can probably get him really cheap. You could probably get him in the 12th round or later, um, especially because he tweaked his ankle just the other day. Uh, he left the game with a tweaked ankle, and so they're still monitoring him day to day. So keep an eye on that. But Isaiah Spiller is one definitely – to take a look at and to target. 
Now, Damian Pierce, Damian Pierce from the Texans, he didn't even play over the weekend in game two. You know why? Because they've already given him the RB1 spot. They haven't come out and officially announced him as their starting starting running back, but I'm telling you, this guy is their starting running back. And in my draft that I just had, he got picked in the 16th round. I waited to the 16th round to pick him up. I mean, this guy's going to be a steal, and he should be very, very good in Lovey Smith's offense. Lovey Smith loves to run the ball. And they're looking for Damian Pierce to handle the rock. This could be the steal of the draft. You're looking at a, a possible RB1. An RB1. He could end up as a top 10 running back, fantasy back. And you can get him after the 13th, 14th, 15th round. I picked him up in the 16th round with my very last pick. Damian Pierce is a major sleeper and he's got to be rostered on every format. You got to get him, Damian Pierce. Now, like I said, when we started this whole thing, I said that I don't expect you to go out and get all eight of these guys, but you know, if you can get three of them on your team, that'll be amazing. That'll be really good for you. Here's another guy that we have. Before I get to my top two, I'm going to throw in, this is a kind of, this is the number eight pick that I, I would have had. I, I didn't mention him first, but I'll mention him now. Alec Pierce. Alec Pierce, wide receiver for the Colts, is getting great reviews from the Colts camp. Matt Ryan loves this kid. He says that his work ethic is like the great ones. He says he has talent and work ethic, and when you put those together, he can see this kid being great in this league. Other reports have come out, and they've said that the way he's going now, he may be on, on course for like 90 to 100 targets, 90 to 100 catches this year. A rookie in the number two wide receiver slot, getting 90 to 100 catches, that's incredible. That's high, high volume. Even if they did 80% of that, you're still looking at 65 to 75 catches. That's a lot of that's a lot of volume. So you got to look at Alec Pierce, look for his volume. I'm telling you, the Colts love this guy, and you got to go out, take a hard look at him. You'll be able to get him so cheap. You'll be able to get him in the last two rounds right now. He's really under the radar, a great sleeper pick but he's one that must be rostered in all formats. Go to phasefantasy.com and pick up your draft kit today. It's loaded with hundreds of hours of research, rookie reports, current ADP rankings, beat writers info for every team, video breakdowns, draft selection advice, consistency charts for quarterbacks and running backs. Go grab it today. And when you enter the promo code phasecast, that's F-A-Z-E-C-A-S-T, you'll get $5 off. It's only 15 bucks. That's the most inexpensive draft kit on the market today. Drafts are right around the corner, so get yours today. Use promo code FaZecast and save $5. That's just a $10 investment to win your draft. It's well worth it. Get yours today and dominate your draft. FaZeFantasy.com Our final two. Now, these two guys I'm really, really excited about because I think that they have potential to be top five fantasy wide receivers. First of all, the Pittsburgh Steelers, George Pickens. George Pickens is just a dog. He's a dog. He looks like an NFL receiver already. He runs routes. He's confident. Everything about him says future star. The things that people were, were you know, worried about or concerned about were – his off the field stuff. He had a bad attitude. He would get in fights on the field, things like that. But you know what? That's just immaturity stuff. That's stuff that Mike Tomlin has to deal with. And he's great. He's great at dealing with those kind of people with, with young guys. He's, you know, his motto is we're going to make these young men into men. We're going to make them these amateurs and these rookies into professionals, professional football players. And so he's in the perfect situation they got the kid 
um, the, the young quarterback there. And so they're doing a whole rehaul. Deion, Deontay Johnson is the number one. And then they have Chase Claypool, the number two. And Pickens has already been named the number three wide receiver. But I think he can take Claypool's position before the end of the season. So look for George Pickens. You, this guy you have to roster. Now, you really need to go after him. Get him in the ninth or later. You can find him there. He'll be there. But you got to get him because you may really have a top five, top ten fantasy wide receiver for a real cheap price. And then my number one pick of all that I, I say you, you have to roster him, and I picked him up in the eighth round. I did a video originally on him that said, you know, I'd pick him up in the second round. Well, I didn't have to pick him up in the second round, but that's how highly I think about him because of the situation that he was drafted into, Kansas City Chiefs, Sky Moore. Now, you're going to have a, a lot of debate on Sky Moore, but I'm going by Andy Reid and his knowledge of great talent. When he sees great talent, he knows it, and he has proven his, his track record is proven. Tyreek Hill, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Kareem Hunt. I mean, he's identified all these guys and now they're all household names and they're all fantasy names because Andy Reid saw them, got them out of college, got them pretty cheap and put them in his system and they thrived. He's got Patrick Mahomes as his quarterback. Sky Moore is in a prime position to be the next star out of Kansas City. I'm telling you right now, if there's one rookie that you make sure you draft this year, draft sky more he is going to be a top five fantasy receiver i'm telling you he's a stone cold lock as long as he stays healthy juju smith schuster is already dealing with some um injuries and just little things uh, juju's will be probably fine but he's he only played five games last year he was injured a lot last year so we're not sure exactly how fine juju is going to be so look for Sky Moore. I'm telling you, he's the guy that you want to go and get. These eight rookies can really help you win your league this year. All of them. If you get three of them on your team, you're really going to strengthen your team. These are the guys. A couple of them are deep sleepers, like Damian Pierce is a deep sleeper. Alec Pierce is a deep sleeper. I'm telling you, go out, get these guys, target them. Check out our videos at phasefantasy.com. Check out phasefantasy.com or Phase Fantasy Live YouTube channel. Check out our videos. And I've broken them all down so you can see exactly what we think about them and see them in action. All right, well, that's what we got for you today. We are going to be coming at you twice a week throughout the season with all kinds of information and intel to help you dominate your fantasy football league i'm so excited that we're back in it we're back in it and your draft is probably right around the corner it might be this week it might be next weekend but it's really soon so go to facefantasy.com and pick up your draft kit today all right you have a great one we'll see you on the next one <laughs>